Hello. So it's Friday, February the 4th, and some very exciting things have happened in the last week. Ground school is continuing, and we're getting into meteorology now, which is definitely a whole thing. There's all sorts of things I have to know, um, and just kind of know, or at least know where to find the answers to. Hopefully I just have to know where to find the answers to, and don't have to have a lot memorized, because I have a memory like a sieve. But one of the most exciting things that's happened is I did book my first flight my first uh, like flight school training flight. So it's all of course dependent on weather and all this other stuff. So it may or may not happen, um, but I've booked um, the first three. Uh, there'll be one this coming weekend and two the weekend after. And if the weather's good, I'll get three flights in and we'll kind of be off to the races. So hopefully coming up shortly in this video, there'll be um, some flying actual, Paul will actually go flying. Of course, there is some paperwork to fill out and stuff, but um, you know, we'll get through it. But one of the things that I decided to do um, before I went flying is I decided to splash out and get myself some proper pilots, fancy schmancy, ridiculously expensive sunglasses, um, specifically designed for aviators and flying in airplanes and that sort of thing. And I have them here. So I'm actually going to unbox them now. So I decided to splash out. I bought some flying eyes, flying sunglasses, uh, very, very top of the line, fancy schmancies. Did I mention I had to sell my car to pay for anyway? Let's just ignore all this. Uh, so yeah, this is the box I have. I, this has been here actually for a couple of days. I just haven't had a chance to dig into it. So I'm going to crack this open right now. I basically bought the biggest, um, the biggest pair I could find because my skull is absolutely me absolutely massive here we go so what do we have in our flying eyes box we've got uh focus on what matters um and we have uh, it comes with a case and everything this is kind of cool it's that it's actually like it's not just a bag it's actually like a semi-hard case too so that's actually very cool all right here we go let's open this up flying eyes sun okay it's got a big and it has a bag this is actually super cool that it comes with like this little case I really like that. And it's like kind of like automatically flips open too. I don't know if you can see that, but like kind of like has a bit of a, a bit of like a flip open. Hello. So what do we have here? So we've got, uh, whatever this is, I'm sure. Oh, these must, these like, must be nose pieces or something. I'm sure that will become apparent later. Oh, so it is. Yeah. Nose pad adjustment. That's talking about, it comes with a little sticker as well. It comes with a nose pad adjustment thing, but let's actually pull these guys out of here and see what they look like here we go oh so the deal with these sunglasses is that um the arms are really thin so they're designed to like go under your aviation headsets and stuff and the arms are also very flexible very flexible arms um so they kind of wrap around your head they're not going to be uncomfortable to wear that sort of thing but yeah let's try these guys on i'll flip back to the main camera and we'll try these on they're not as big as i was expect as i was thinking they were going to be but uh how do i look so i got the lenses that have like a graduated um shade to them the idea is that if you're looking out of the cockpit the top part is dark but when you're glancing down it's a bit lighter so you can see your instruments and stuff but yeah these are my uh my face is crooked but you know what do you do they are they are quite comfortable and it, obviously it's wrapping around my head quite a bit at the back so they're, they're going to be snug they're not going to go anywhere not really anyways hashtag not sponsored but if flying eyes do want to sponsor me please get in touch so yeah this is very cool i'll be wearing these sunglasses the next time i go flying so yeah, stay tuned because there will be flying happening. Hopefully, like I say, if all goes well, depend on the weather, there will be flying happening soon. I'm actually just going to check the weather real quick. I had to book three hour uh, sessions. The instructor said book three hour sessions for the first three sessions um, just to make sure you have extra time to do all your stuff. And really, it's a very good idea because I'm planning on filming it. So I'm going to have a lot of gear with me. Uh, we're going to have to deal with that. And I'll try and get the audio right this time. Well, it is, uh, it is the day, it is, uh, day is it today? 12th, I guess, of February. Having my first flight lesson today, I don't know how much flying is actually going to be involved. Um, because it's going to be like, I gotta learn how to do a pre-flight check and I gotta learn all a bunch of other stuff. So we'll see how it goes. Had a bit of a COVID scare, wasn't sure if it was, if it was, if we were going to go forward with it in the end, but, uh, both Praveen and myself are fully vaccinated, so we don't have to worry about it. So I've got all my stuff here. I was going to go through my flight bag ahead of time, but of course it's me, so I was running late. 
Uh, my flight bag is here. It's got all sorts of cool stuff in it that you can't see because it's dark in the car and stuff. Funny enough, as I was driving up, I actually saw the airplane we're going up in, the same airplane we did our Discovery flight in. I actually saw that plane taxiing back to the, the parking area. What do they call that? Uh, but I have a few minutes, so why don't I show you um, what I have in my flight flight bag so I didn't get a chance to do that before I left the house. The important stuff include the manual for the uh, the airplane. That's very important, you need that. Other things I'm pr well, I may not need right now, but I thought I'd make a habit of bringing. I brought my little flight computer, my maps, gonna need those one day probably. Brought my logbook, still empty. Uh, Brought my logbook, just a notebook to write stuff in, a little earplug container because I'm a baby. Brought my fancy sunglasses, got those handy as well. And then of course I've got all my filming gear, I've got the camera in my hand, I've got a couple GoPros, various mounts, got my audio recorder with the cables, hopefully I remembered everything. My lesson's supposed to start in like 15 minutes or so, so I'm going to take this opportunity to prepare. Uh, I'm going to check the uh, the METARs, uh, which is like the weather, current weather conditions, check the NOTAMs, which are like notices to pilots. Um, and anything else I can check to see what's going on in, in the world of just kind of be as ready as I can and maybe go over some old notes about how because it's a beautiful glorious day out so how is the sunshine affecting going to affect conditions I'm gonna forget but we'll we'll figure it out hi it's Paul from the future so it turns out yeah the audio is messed up on this one as well hopefully uh, it'll be fixed next time you'll see why in a second uh, but really what's important from this flight is just assume I did fantastic and um, you can see here that I look fantastic in my sunglasses back to the video okay so I'm out here it's February 19th and I was supposed to have gone flying today uh, in this plane right here this is Cessna 172N Golf Victor Oscar Tango. We're supposed to have gone flying today, but it's really turbulent. Apparently, it's not a good day for flying. So, uh, I mean, it doesn't look too bad outside. Like it, it's it's the weather-wise, it's okay, but the winds are deceiving. But uh, Praveen very kindly uh, let me uh, practice doing a pre-flight check. But I'm going to have to go through step by step with this. This is a copy of the uh, the manual basically for the plane. So, um, yeah, let's go inside, and I can show. We're going to walk through all the pre-flight check stuff. Hopefully. Hi, it's Paul from the future again. Uh, for the record, I do know this isn't really a complete pre-flight check. Uh, this is just what I could bother to include. Uh, so yeah, don't at me. Back to the video. Step one, make sure the pilot operating handbook, which is one of these, is in the plane, but it has to be the original one. And the original one I happen to know is right back here. It's that binder right there. Control wheel lock, remove. The control wheel lock has this doohickey right here. So we take this out. That has been removed. I'm gonna put that in there. Ignition switch off. That's the ignition switch right there. Avionics off. There's the avionics switch right there. Master on. All right, so quickly we check the fuel. So we've got lots of fuel in both tanks. Uh, static pressure, all that stuff. We don't have that. Baggage door check. It doesn't make any sense. I'm confused already. Either way, I'm going to turn this off again. Wait, that's the switch on. Oh, I see. Yeah, check the quantity of the fuel and then turn off the magic. See, I'm really good at this. Baggage door. Check. Lock with... Ch Let's check the baggage door. This is the baggage door right here. As you can see, the baggage we have right now is a tissue box. But, uh, but yeah, baggage door is correct in place. Control services. Check freedom of movement and security. So we're checking to see if they're loose and we're checking to make sure that they work. So the rudder is moving nicely. These are the uh, elevators. They're moving nicely and I can see inside the cockpit that the steering wheel is moving as well. Uh, right wing trailing edge, that one. Aileron, check freedom of movement and security. All right, well the aileron's out here on this side of the wing. So, and I'm moving this up and down. It feels good. It feels locked in place nicely. And again, looking inside the cockpit, I can see the wheel moving. Right wing, wing tie down disconnect. Not gonna do that. Main wheel tire, check for proper inflation. Does this look inflated to you? Oh yeah, we'd normally be doing the fuel check. So we're not gonna do that right now, but right here, this little hole right here, that is the, uh, where you drain some fuel, let's check for fuel. And with the fuel, you look to make sure there's no water in it, there's no sediment, there's no bad stuff in there, it's just fuel. Oh, and then we have to look at the fuel itself. So, how we do that 
is very dangerously. The fuel is up on top of the wing. Basically what you do is you climb up and there's like somewhere up there, there's a thing that you open up and you check and make sure there's fuel in there. Um, there's also like a dipstick you can use to make sure there's fuel in there and that sort of thing. Engine oil level, that's back here. Right there, that, ooh, it's warm. Right there is the uh, engine oil thingy. So we would go in there, we'd check and make sure there's lots of oil in there and whatever else. And then we gotta check the prop. So what we do is we kind of go along here, we check the leading edge, make sure the leading edge feels good. There's no like dings or anything that's bad that would imp impede performance. Check the back of it, make sure it's nice and smooth. There's no cracks and chips or anything like that. It all feels proper and correct, at least that one does. Landing lights, check for condition and cleanliness. The landing lights underneath this big engine shroud, it's like, Right, right in here somewhere, underneath there. So we're gonna assume that it's still there and that it works. Carburetor air filter, check the air filter. It's like right in there somewhere. Uh, so yeah, we check that, make sure there's no bird's nests or whatever in it. Nose wheel, strut and tire, check proper inflation. So on the nose wheel, we make sure that this thing here is not collapsed, make sure the tire's pumped up. Static source opening. This is the static port right here. And it looks clear from what I can see. We didn't check the leading edge of the right wing. Hold on, did it say that? Weird. Well, what we do is we look along the leading edge of the wing here and we kind of see, does it look like normal? Any major issues or bumps or unevenness? Looks pretty good. Look down the wing, make sure that it's smooth and make sure there's no dents or anything that could cause problems. PO tube cover remove and check opening for stockage. So this, is the PO tube. So we kind of look in there, make sure it's not blocked. There's some like a little tiny hole in the back right there, make sure that's not blocked and everything. I'm just gonna put this back on there for now. Fuel tank vent opening. Uh, oh, uh, I think it's this right here. Yeah, this is it, this is, this is, this is it right here. That's the fuel tank vent, make sure that's not, make sure there's no birds nesting in there. Stall warning opening, stall warning horn is right here. I'm not seeing any birds or small rodents. Aileron, check for freedom of movement and security. Now, I don't know whether you can see it, you probably can't, but if you look closely in the cockpit when I move this aileron manually, you see the wheels, the steering wheels in there moving. Technically it's not called the steering wheel, technically it's called a yoke, but we'll gloss over that. Pre-flight inspection complete. Oh. Sweet. Okay, let's go back inside. Okay, so basically make sure your seat belts are on, adjusted and locked. Fuel selector valve, the fuel selector valve in this plane is down here, so we'd set that to be both. Avionics power switch, avionics power would be off, autopilot is off, electrical, okay, everything's off. Uh, then what we would do is we would test and set the brakes. The brakes are like the upper portion of the rudder pedal, so you'd push those in, make sure they're tested. This here is the brake lock, so we'd pull this out and flip it down. Circuit breakers, check in. Where are the circuit breakers? There they are. They all feel pretty good to me. Just gotta make sure they're all in, nothing's popped out. Starting the engine, mixture, rich. So we push this in all the way, push in the carb heat. Master switch on, boop, prime as required. There's the primer, we go pop, pop, throttle, open one eighth of an inch. So we push that open an eighth of an inch. So you gotta look and make sure nothing is actually out there that's gonna get hit by the propeller. And then you yell out the window, what can only be described as. All right, so having done that, then we move the ignition to start. Check the oil pressures, which is here. Pre temperatures and pressures right there. Then we move to the takeoff checklist. Uh, make sure the parking brake is set. So we make sure again, this is pulled out and twisted down. Uh, cabin doors and windows closed and locked. Make sure that everything's closed and, and locked and stuff. Flight controls fle flee and co what? Flight controls free and correct. Well, that means what we do is we turn the wheel Make sure this goes out all the way nicely. Make sure this goes in all the way nicely. Turn this back and forth. We can check outside, make sure the ailerons are moving. Make sure they're moving as they should be. And look out the back, make sure the elevators are moving. 
check the rudders, make sure the rudders are moving. This, see, the rudder pedals are really far in front of me and I'm short, so I can't quite reach them right now. Flight instruments set, so we'd make sure that our uh, attitude indicator is in the right spot. We'd make sure our altimeter is set to the right setting. Uh, make sure that our, uh, this thing, the direction indicator thingy and the compass all match up nicely and stuff. We can adjust that as well. Fuel selector valve, both. So we set that, that one up to both for starting. Mixture rich, again, pushing this one in all the way. Elevator trim and rudder trim. So we take our trim wheel here, make sure it's set for takeoff. Set the throttle to 1700 RPM. So basically we take the throttle knob, push it in until our RPM gauge reads 1700. Then we check the magnetos which is a thing that airplanes have that are very important so we change this from both take it back to like right and take it to left and then what we see we see a slight rpm drop but we make sure the rpm drop isn't too much make sure it's within range do the same thing with the car peak pull this out make sure that stays within make sure it doesn't drop too far check the amp meter right here make sure that's on just on the good side of zero make sure our suction gauge is in the green then what we do is we flip on our avionics that turns on some of this stuff over here. Make sure the radios are set correctly, the right frequencies and everything. Beacon, nav light, and strobe lights on as required. Those are down here. So we've got the beacon light, we've got the nav light and the landing light as required. Throttle friction lock adjust. Um, I think, uh, is that this? Um, there's much to know. And then you start going. And the next checklist is the takeoff checklist. Um, now one thing it didn't, one thing we didn't do during the pre-flight check was look at... I don't know if that plane's about to take off or land or what. Yeah, apparently it just landed or it was just taxiing somewhere. Yeah, one thing we didn't look at during this was I didn't notice where we're supposed to do the flaps. But yeah, that's basically all the pre-flight checks, um, except for the stuff I wasn't able to do or the stuff that I don't know what's going on. Anyway, yeah, today's flight got cancelled, but hopefully tomorrow uh, tomorrow the uh, flight will, will work. Hopefully it'll be alright. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to <laughs> figure out if I can fix the audio, because I have no idea. Just figure out the audio levels. I'm gonna do that. So now it's February 27th. Uh, this video comes out tomorrow, so I'm just going to wrap this up right now. Turns out that not only was the, my flight the following day after the um, the fake uh, pre-flight check canceled, uh, every flight I've booked since then has been canceled because of, basically because of weather or whatever. It's mildly concerning because I, so right now I have an hour and a half total time, and I need to get at least 45 hours to even think about writing the uh, the, the PPL, getting getting a PPL. So. Um, not entirely sure how I'm going to get that many hours if the flights keep getting canceled. So hopefully sometime soon I'll be able to actually do some more flying more often. Still, uh, things are going generally pretty well. We're getting through flight school. There's only a, a, a month worth of flight school left. So, um, yeah, the, things are kind of coming to a head and it's just going to be a matter of getting flight time and getting good but yeah time to wrap this video up i need to hurry and get this video done and, and rendering so i can get it posted by before the end of the day tomorrow um uh, thanks for watching and um yeah hopefully uh for next month's video i'll actually have some more flying stuff with decent audio and whatnot so yeah okay bye